Hey everybody. Uh, so yesterday at around 8 p.m. we finally got this site launched. So now I had, I think I had a total of four hours of live streaming yesterday and uh, spent a lot of time. I got in at 8 a.m. and I left at 9 p.m. So it's a pretty epic day of, uh, of getting this site ready. I hope I don't have to do that again anytime soon. And uh, I'm still still a little bit sick, uh, so my voice is not not exactly normal right now. So sorry for that. But I got my Trello board up right now, and uh, somebody typed in the in the last. Oh, okay, sorry, I was a little confused. My analytics were showing that basically nothing was happening and nobody was watching, which is weird because I had people waiting. Okay. Um, so I got my Trello board up here just to show you last night when I left, these were all clear. I had nothing in, in this ready for development section. I had nothing in this section. So just from the emails that I got this morning when I got in, these are all filled up and I've already knocked some of them out. So I've, I've done some of them. <laughs> Uh, so I got in a little bit later than normal today. I slept in a little bit. Um, so a lot of the changes are not really like a big deal. Some of them were just like a typo here or there. Probably the one that was the biggest deal was uh, there were a couple of links that were going to the wrong places. That's that's kind of a big deal. It looks like maybe I um, like I skipped. I was just copy and pasting links and I think I skipped like one link and just kept going and so the last like three in a row were off by one. So got that one fixed. That was that was important to fix. Um, the other ones I think I pushed that live with with some um, some edits to the text. All this other stuff is not like a huge deal except for this part. So I have these in the end progress, and this is what I want to try to accomplish, at least most of this today. Uh, I'm not going to put in a full day today, <laughs> because I, I put in so much extra time this week. Uh, so I'll probably have a short stream today and then uh, get out uh, a little bit early. All right. Hey, hey to everybody in the, in the live chat. Okay, now we've got... Now it's saying 45 viewers. That's that's up closer to what what we normally have. I think I have had over a hundred concurrent viewers at once before, but I usually hover like around 50. I think. Um. So I've been working on resizing images. So I want to show you some some stuff, some crazy stuff. So I've been having ad adventures with image resizing. Uh, so I'm gonna pull this over, and it's gonna be hard to see. So let me let me try to zoom in. Nope. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna try to zoom this as much as I possibly can, so you guys can see. And when I do the zoom like this, I can't see the live chat or anything else, so um, I won't be able to see anything while we're while I'm, I'm zoomed like this. Um, okay. So this is that big image on the home page, and it, I'll, I'll read this all out in case you can't see it because it's kind of small. Um, it's 2.1 megabytes of an image on the home page. Just by converting it from a ping to a JPEG, we've brought that down to 184 kilobytes. So that's that's pretty good uh, conversion. Not bad. I haven't even compressed this and I haven't even attempted to resize it. I'm a little bit nervous to resize this because I worked on the positioning so much I don't want to mess it up. But for now, um, that's a big improvement and it's going to be an even bigger one once I compress it. Uh, also, I have I have an even bigger one here. So on on the page for um, the court or for the events, 
This was a ping 2.9 megabytes. Like that's crazy. Like I have whole sites, like the homepage on a site that the entire page is less than that. So that's crazy. <laughs> so just by changing this into a JPEG, I got it down to 598 kilobytes and that's uncompressed. So that's pretty awesome. The other one that was a weird format and really surprising to me was this. So this is a GIF and I, I don't know why this was in GIF format. Uh, that's just, it's weird to me. Why would, I don't know why you'd use a GIF unless you wanted it to be am, animated. Um, maybe I'm just missing something. But it was it was only 170 kilobytes, not nearly as bad as, as these other ones. So I expected that it would actually go down uh, in, in size when I converted it to a JPEG, but it didn't. It actually went up. And that was really surprising. So then I went ahead and optimized it, and I got it down to 104. So from 170 to 104, that's a decent uh, decrease there. Uh, but that was just kind of weird. Um, so good to know. A GIF that's just a static image, not an animated GIF, is, you know, when you're talking about uncompressed, it actually ends up being smaller than a JPEG. So that's all I'm doing. I'm also resizing some some things. So I left, I didn't delete the um, the original versions yet because I wanted to show you. This image is on the home page. Look how huge it is, three thousand eight hundred and forty pixels wide. Okay, so and that's it's actually not that. It's only two hundred seventy kilobytes. So compared to these, uh, these some of these other ones we were loading, it's not as nearly as bad, but. That is just a huge, huge image. So, um, so I resize that to 700, and look at that. I haven't even compressed it yet. I got it down to 14 kilobytes. So much better. I'll show you uh, where that was on the on the site. Let me bring this over. So that gigantic picture was just this. At no point does this image ever get wider than 700 pixels, and we had it at over 3,000. So. The images that I had on the site were embarrassingly large, and uh, normally I would never put images that large on a site, but when I got them, I was so rushed, I just, whatever images I got, I didn't, I didn't even look at the size, I just threw them on the site just to get them on there and have something to look at, and then when it came down to it yesterday, I just ran out of time and didn't get to compress them. So today, I'm compressing them. So, sorry to anybody who tried to view this uh, using your data plan on your phone. Uh, I probably cost you, you know, a dollar or something trying to load this page. All right, let me check the live chat real quick since I get the uh, the view back to normal. All right, someone asks, "Can you just speak out my name, please?" Okay, I'll try my best to say your name. It's just, it's. Psycat Sci Day? I'm not sure. Uh, let me know if I did it right on the pronunciation. Um, I really do try to pronounce the, everybody's names properly. Everybody always pronounces my name wrong, so I'm, I'm definitely aware of that. Um, Okay, uh, Melissa says, what if you need to preserve transparency? They're talking about the um, uh, the file formats. So, um, yeah, if you have, so normally like a ping can have transparency and um, a GIF uh, can have transparency. I'm, yeah, I'm almost positive it can have transparency. Uh, but normally if I wanted transparency, I would just go with a ping uh, I don't know why, that's just like always what, what I've had to work with. Um, although it does kind of seem like maybe the, if the GIF has transparency too, maybe that would be a smaller file format. I don't know, I'll have to look into that. Um, some of them, uh, I didn't really need them to be transparent anymore, uh, so I just converted them into JPEGs because it would be smaller than a ping. Uh, so if they were on like, 
if I could convert them to a JPEG from a transparent background and they were going to be on white anyway, and I'd keep the white background, then it would work. I don't, I don't need the transparency. In the same way, there was um, some of them are, are on a black background. I don't need, um, I didn't need to keep the uh, transparency for that. But actually, I, I probably, I see what you're saying with that, um, this uh, San Damiano uh, GIF that we just looked at. I forgot to check and see if it converted it to a black background or a white background. Some of them were converting black, some were white. I don't know why. Uh, this one did white. I might not be able to use it. If anybody knows, I'm using image magic on the command line to convert these, and I'll I'll bring over my command line in a second and show you how I'm doing this. If anybody knows why, sometimes I'm getting white backgrounds when I trans when I go from uh, like a transparent format, like a GIF or a ping to a JPEG. Sometimes it's black, sometimes it's white. I don't know why. If you know how I can set that, let me know because that would be helpful. When especially like I need this one to have a black background and it would work. And there are some logos here that I need to have white backgrounds, but they're giving me black. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Melissa is saying, <laughs> you in the live chat, um, Melissa was basically like <laughs> answering me and, and uh, I wasn't looking because I had my screen uh, zoomed in on everything uh, a few minutes ago and I couldn't. I couldn't see the live chat, so. Uh, Sam says, ping has better compression. Okay. How do you manage to get all your mails directly to Trello board? All right, somebody asked how I managed to get all my mails directly to Trello board. Um, I'm not exactly sure. What you're saying? I um, did I meant did I say something about email? So the mail, the emails didn't come directly in. I just basically checked my emails and uh, sorted them out into these. So I I typed these out. The emails didn't go directly in there. Although that would be cool if I could route my emails directly into Trello. I probably could do that with Zapier. Uh, just set up a task to um, check my email and put it direct directly in a Trello board. But all right, let's uh, let's do some some compression. I think out of all this list, probably the thing that's the most interesting right now that needs done is is this image stuff, uh, and that's just because um, if if you're not that good with Photoshop like me, then it's a lot easier to just use the command line to edit your images. So I'm going to show you how I'm doing that here. I did do a video a while ago on image compression, so if you saw that, some of this is going to be the same, but I, I am going to show how to resize, which I didn't show that on uh, on that video. So I've got this, I just sorted things out by um, like subfolders inside my image folder on my local version of the site, just to keep things organized for me, and then I can see how it looks and move it into the main folder later on. And I'll, I'll clean it up and get rid of all these subfolders uh, before I push this uh, to the server. So basically I'm going through the, the home page. Everything's already good. I, I still need to get a black background version of this. That's maybe a JPEG. This is not really a huge file. I'm not super concerned, but um, I want to try to get as small as I can. All right, so this image was really big, and now it's now it's smaller. Let's take a look at these ones. Uh, so I mean, I go through and expect it. I I have the files locally, but you know, other, otherwise you could just go into Dev Tools and inspect. Okay, see this picture naturally. It, it's saying it's. Let me blow this up a little bit so you can see. Uh, it's saying that naturally this is 755 pixels wide but it's only displaying at 371. So it's a little bit wider than we need. Uh, on my other screen, I'm going to find this image real quick and move it to the folder, the resize folder. 
Oh, wow. It's actually even larger uh, than that. It's um, it's in here with it's 1,400 pixels wide. That's way bigger than we need. All right, so let me let me drop this in the resize folder, and then we will resize it right on the command line. And I might as well drop these two in as well. So these ones that I've already resized in the folder, I'm going to get rid of. And I'm, I'm doing this on my other screen, so you can, uh, don't worry if you're not seeing it. It's just literally, I'm, I'm moving them to the trash. Okay. Okay, uh, Patrick said he just looked it up. Try the um, the background option so I can pass the flag as, as background and pass it the color. Oh, awesome. Uh, let me finish getting these uh, these images in the right folder first, and then I'm going to try what, what Patrick just uh, suggested. Thank you for looking that up. That's awesome. If, if you've ever seen the image magic documentation, it's like super thorough, but it is, it's like trying to just take a dictionary and start reading it. I mean, it's, there's so much. Um, it's just, it's hard to go through it. it. It's easier to try to find something on Stack Overflow than to go through that documentation. Uh, okay, Petrox image. Oh man, yeah, we, we definitely need to resize these images. Uh, this one here is over 2,000 pixels wide. Um, and then we have one more. Okay. Yeah, and that, that third one also needs resize. That's over a thousand pixels. Okay, so let me... Let's check out our, um, our folder that we're doing for conversion. So I'm going to go out. Hopefully, um, let me know. Oops. Let me know if you can't see... Uh, this command line stuff right here, if it needs to be bigger. Um, I'm going to go into this folder. I mean, you don't necessarily have to be in the folder. You could do the command uh, and just go that path, but it's easier uh, to see what's going on like this. Uh, convert. There we go. Okay, so we have our original... San Damiano um, GIF, okay, and that's what we want to have a black background. So we're going to do convert and um, we're going to use, what was it, background? Let me see, where's, where was Patrick's comment? Background and how are we going to pass it the color? We just do a space and pass it? Is that... I didn't actually see the documentation. We'll try it like this. This is a copy anyway. If I mess it up, I, it's no big deal. Um, so can I just pass black? Do I have to use a hex color? Um, we'll just try it with black for now. Um, and we'll go... Um, the San Damiano... The GIF, and then we're, we want to convert that to the JPEG, and we'll just we'll just overwrite that other one. All right, let's see what happened. Hmm. Nope. All right, I'll have to look that one up. But it's good to know now. I know what to look up. I'll look up the background option and see exactly how to do it. All right, Melissa says she's a Photoshop girl, doesn't understand the programming yet. Uh, command line is very interesting. Yeah, um, that's cool. I have there's a guy that that works with me that is really awesome with Photoshop, uh, but he's on vacation this week, so that's why. I, normally, I wouldn't even be doing all this stuff. I would maybe just run like a batch compression uh, from the command line on the whole. Like all my images, but that would be it, and he would handle everything else. Um, so, um, thank you, Melissa. Melissa said the website is beautiful. 
Uh, thanks. Uh, the code editor is Adam. Oh, I, <laughs> I always do that. Uh, people ask questions in the live chat, and then uh, they get answered like in the next line, but I don't read ahead before I answer. <laughs> Uh, Mobbin asks, aren't there tools to automatically do that? Uh, yeah, basically. Um, there are tools. I, I've had, um, I've used Gulp before, and I've set it up to just use um, Image Magic. Like, when I do my build process, it just goes in and resizes and optimizes all my images for me. It works really well when you have a lot of images that are all going to be like a standard width and so you know what, but if you have lots of different size images, it's not quite as easy. So I didn't set that up with this project because I'm using Webpack and uh, and I'm not using Gulp. I'm not nearly as knowledgeable about Webpack and I'm not comfortable yet doing stuff like that. Probably I need to make like an, just an NPM script or something to do it. But at this point, there are not that many images, so it's not a big deal to just do it uh, by hand. And if you're using a content management system like WordPress, you upload a file, it does all this resizing for you. Uh, someone asked, is this Python? Uh, nope. Um, this is, well, right now I'm on the command line. Um, and then the code over here is, this is CSS, and we've got HTML mixed in with JavaScript here. Uh, it's a particular... JavaScript framework called React. So that's what we're working with. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, Jacques, Jacques Simon. So is that how you pronounce that, Jacques? Okay, um, sorry if I mispronounce it. Jacques's new to coding. Uh, he loves Free Code Camp. Awesome. Sam has a site. Uh, he can um, run uh, images through for compression. Okay, cool. Melissa did ask about the programs I'm using. I do have links to all of them in the um, in the description. So check out the description. Uh, this is Adam. This is my text editor. I'm using the SETI theme. That's S E T I. Uh, people are always interested in a theme, and I don't have that listed. This is iTerm two. I'm using for the terminal and then you know this is just dev tools that comes with uh, Chrome uh, and then my project management stuff in the background is Trello all right so let me show you um, how I'm resizing these images so I'm gonna go back into the resize folder um, And I'll show you, I have those three images that we were looking at. So let me let me bring up the site so we can see it. Uh, and the cool part is going to be to compare this local version to the version that's live after we do these compressions. And we can actually just see, like, what the size of that page is in terms of, like, megabytes. And there'll, there'll be a significant uh, difference. That'll help with load times, too. Um... Uh, the site seems really fast, like faster than it should be because it's prefetching a lot of stuff in the background and we're using a service worker, uh, but it's still loading more than I want it to load. You just don't notice it as much uh, since we set it up like this. So I'm going to go in and uh, we're going to use a command called Mogrify. Okay, so this is from ImageMagic 2. It's just like pretty much just like using the convert command except this is when you want to do like a batch conversion. So we're going to do that and we're going to use the flag resize. And I'm going to pass in, well, we need to see what we want, how big we want these to be. So basically I'll just check and I'm just going to inspect this and see how big this is. So we have 409 pixels across. And you want to try out, because when we go down lower, these are going to be full width. And so I just want to make sure this might actually be our largest size. The other one was, what, 204? Oh, and this one is, let's see, 537? Yeah, 537 across. I'm going to make these 600. I like to go a little bit over. Um, it just gives us some leeway in case... 
in case I missed something, like I missed a break point or something where it was bigger, I just round up a little bit. Uh, so we're going to go 600. If you just type in one number into this command, uh, then it's just the width, and it keeps your aspect ratio and changes the height in proportion. So that's what we want. And the last thing I need to do is tell it uh, what type of files I wanted to do this on. Let me let me make sure I get this um, this is right. Okay. Um, so we're going to use uh, an asterisk, and we're going to say, "Oh, these are JPEGs, right?" Yep. Okay, so I'm going to bring over my my files again. And I'm going to do a zoom again. And we're going to see, let me bring this, oops, that's not it, is it? Oh, shoot, I grabbed the wrong image. I'll have to do it um, one more time, but... <laughs> the um, the zoom feature on here I'm not great with. Okay, here we go. This is what I want you to see. We're at 600 now. So all these that were in this folder are now at 600. I didn't really want this one in here. We'll just delete that. What I really wanted. So we'll, we'll take these. And um, we're just going to move them in here into this folder. And I'll say, yeah, I want them to replace that. And that's it. They're already replaced. Um, I, I have backups of all these somewhere, so I'm, I'm comfortable just kind of doing that. And then, but we missed an image. We missed, uh, what was it? The Father Nathan's image? And where was that? There it was. Yeah, so this one's still huge. Yep. Let's just do a conversion right there in place on that. All right, so we're going to do just the, the one picture version of this. 600, and we're going to go, if we wanted to do it just on one image, Father Nathan, uh, JPEG, that's how we do it. Uh, I'm not going to change the name. I just wanted to convert that one. Oops. I thought, I thought that was the image name, right? We just had it there. Did I miss something? Where is that? Yeah, that's it. Hmm. That's really weird. Not sure what's going on there. I'll work on that later. Maybe the syntax is different when you're trying to do one image. Uh, not sure about that. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna check the live chat. I'm kind of having like a relaxed day. Yesterday was insane, so uh, a little bit more slow paced than normal uh, live stream. Uh, someone's I I mentioned I use iTerm and uh, and Naveen says it's only for Mac with a frowny face. So yeah, it's only for Mac. I forget, there's something for PC that, um, what do I use on my PC? Shoot, I can't remember, I'm sorry. There's something like iTerm for the PC, I just can't remember what it is. I haven't worked, I have a PC at home, uh, but I haven't worked on it for a long time. I usually just use my, um, my MacBook. Okay, so... Somebody asked, what, what did I miss so far? Um, basically, we're just going over uh, image resizing and um, image conversions. And I'm going to show some image compression here in a minute. And then uh, then I'm going to kind of wrap it up. I'll just you know go to the live chat and, um, and wrap it up. Uh, Shoot, I totally forgot. I wanted to show another uh, video interview from the, the conference I was at last week, but I, I totally forgot. I'll have to remember and do it on Monday because um, I want to make sure I um, I tag that person uh, on Twitter when I when I do the interview. All right, so let me just show you how I do these uh, compressions then. Uh, let's find an image that's pretty big. 
so that we can do a nice a nice compression on. So which one was big? All right, let's try it. Okay, this monstrous image is huge. It's 848 kilobytes. So let's compress this thing. So I'm gonna go. I keep. I keep these um, in my my Google Keep in a note there, uh, so I can just copy and paste them real quick because they're way too long for me to remember. So I'm gonna go right in here, and I'm gonna copy that. Now this is crazy long. I'll go through it in, in just a second. So we're using convert. So this is just the single file version of this. There's a, a batch version, and then there's a recursive version you can do on multiple folders, which is really cool. Uh, for now, I'm just going to show this. If you look at my video from a couple weeks ago on image um, compression, I think I went through all of them, even the the uh, more advanced ones. So we're just going to do strip. That's stripping out all like the metadata that we don't need. Some of these, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know what they all do. I just, um, I found this online somewhere, and I can't remember where. I wish I could remember because I would, I would, you know, give the link and give credit for this. But I've actually seen this in a couple of places, so I'm not really sure where it originated from. So basically, these are all just various, quality 85. This is about the only one I can understand, the strip and the quality 85%. Uh, percent. I'm not sure what the other ones do because I'm not really into, uh, you know, images and stuff. So these ones at the end, this is the one that you want to convert, and this is what you want it to be named after you convert it. Okay, so that's it. So let me go here and uh, who was that? M O N. There we go. Monstrance. Uh, this is like kind of a basic command line thing, but if you don't know. All I typed was MON, and I knew there were no. Uh, there's only one file in that folder that starts with MON, so I just hit Tab, and it auto completed the rest for me. So that saves a lot of time typing. So if you only remember one thing from today's stream, remember that, and it'll save you so much time. And I I just want it to be called the same thing. Sometimes I put like dash op at the end, so I know that I compressed it. But um, I just want this to to go in. Mm. Actually, yeah, I do want to compare it. Let's put the dash op just just so that we can compare the sizes, just for uh, for demonstration purposes. Okay, so now it won't. Before it would have overwritten uh, that that file. Now it won't. All right, and that's it. Let's let's check it out. Let's see what. See what happened here. Okay, so we have this one is 2000. I'll zoom in a little bit. So, still a big image, 2000, you know, width, but 848 kilobytes. Now, let's check out how we did here. There we go, 429 kilobytes. So, we got that thing down um, almost half. Almost halfway down, and considering where we started, so this is what's on the live site right now. This gigantic thing that's what, 2. Point, it's just going off the edge, 2.1 megabytes. And now we're down, we've got down to 429 kilobytes. So that's what, less than 25% of the size of that? That's huge. Um, so that's a huge improvement on that image. It's still a bigger bigger image than I would like to load, but I'm, I'm happy with that. That's a pretty big improvement. And we can go back here and, you know, let's go back into this page. Oops, I meant to go to the home page. We'll go back into the home page just to show that there's no loss of quality. I think my server refers again. Sorry. Whoa, you all can't appear as a descendant of... I actually got a legit warning. That's weird. Oh, UL cannot appear as a descendant of P. We'll have to change that. We did that yesterday. Um, let's see if this will work. No, it's still not working. If you guys watched yesterday, I was trying to... I just put a, a UL, like an unordered list, inside of a P tag. And uh, I wasn't sure what would happen. I just wanted to see uh, if it would work. And evidently, it, it's giving me a warning, so maybe I want to fix that. It's not like breaking anything yet, it's just a warning, but 
I don't I don't want like a, a later update to you know break anything. So basically, here's that image uh, all compressed and converted and compressed. Um, these ones the same thing significantly uh, resized down. I'm gonna bring in the this is the live site that has the un, uncompressed, unresized versions. And we're going to look at them side by side just to show that there's really like no noticeable difference in quality. All right, so let's go up here. I mean, I see. You know, I can't tell the difference. I don't know if you all can tell. I mean, I'll get, we'll zoom really close. I mean, even zoomed in. Look at that. Crazy. This image on the left is less than 25% the size than this image on the right is. And they look identical. Uh, that's just awesome. So, no perceptible loss of quality. Okay. And these ones will be, you'll see the same thing, same way. Let's zoom in on these. This one you can actually see a bit. Let's, let me show it. It looks to me like you can, when you zoom in, you can definitely see because of the letters. So you definitely can see it on that one. Let's zoom out and see. So I'm not that worried about people zooming in, but... Yeah, zoomed out, it looks good. But yeah, you can, if you look really closely, you can tell there's a difference on these images. So, they don't look pixelated or anything, but there's a slight change. But, you know, once again, we got a big improvement on these from resizing these. So, I'll may, maybe I'll look at them again sometime and see if I need to make them a little bit. Uh, larger, but I mean these are 700, you know, pixels in width, and these boxes are not nearly 700 pixels, so they should be fine. All right, um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna check the live chat. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm not gonna go really long today since I went so long yesterday. So let me go to the live chat. I'm gonna answer uh, all your questions now. If you don't want to stick around for the for the questions, uh, that's cool. Uh, I'll I'll be back. Oh, maybe not Monday. Uh, Monday's a holiday here um, in the United States, so I won't be working, and I'll probably be at a picnic at my grandfather's house. So I'll see you on Tuesday. And um, But if you want to stick around for question and answer, go ahead and throw some questions in the live chat, uh, and I'm going to I'm gonna keep going until I get to the bottom. Um, and. Unless there's just an insane amount of questions, then I'll have to cut it off. But I'll keep going until I get to the bottom and answer the questions uh, as best I can. All right, so I'm I'm way I'm kind of back like halfway up the chat now. Uh, I stopped where when Sam was talking about image compression, the site where you can just drag and drop files right on the site. I do use this site sometimes. Um, I but I have found that that command line, that command on the command line has been able to get images smaller with no loss of quality than anything I've ever used before, uh, be it command line tools or or Photoshop stuff or um, even those websites where you can drag and drop. Uh, so this this has just blown me away in terms of the, the quality uh, and the, the size of what you get. Okay. All right, Patrick actually did put the uh, command that I needed uh, in here. So thank you, Patrick. I'm not going to try it right now, um, but I'm definitely going to I'm going to copy and paste this right now, and I'm going to put it in my uh, in Google Keep so that I can remember it. I also um, I do go back and look through all these live chats. So if I don't get to your comment, like I'll see it. Um, you know, or you could just throw it in the comments in the video or direct message me on Twitter uh, if, if you have any, you know, something you want to ask me. Uh, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. Hmm. 
All right, so, so far, not a lot of questions where I'm going. Um, I'm, I'm looking, uh, you all were kind of talking to each other. Oh, yeah, somebody from, um, from Ukraine. Awesome. Thanks for watching. All right, Humberto said, are you scoped correctly? You didn't see the folder structure. Uh, I think that was when I was, yeah, when I was trying to use this um, command here. Um, yeah, I don't know, maybe, was I in the wrong folder? I thought I was in the, I was in the image folder. Oh, well. And I did, Patrick mentioned I was, um, I, I used uh, Mogrify last time. I was using convert this time, so. It's possible that the syntax is just different between the two commands, and I messed that up. But uh, if you're only going to do one image, um, then convert works for one image usually. Uh, I think somebody... So Hunter said there's um, CMDER uh, for Windows. That's the program that I use on Windows. and So it's the equivalent of iTerm for Mac. So for everybody that was asking about that earlier, it's C-M-D-E-R. That's, that's the name of the program for Windows. Um, so check that one out. Definitely better than the default um, command line for Windows. Melissa says the smaller images will load faster. That that's yeah. The smaller images will definitely load faster. It makes a big difference, uh, especially if you're on like a mobile connection. I try to test all my sites in on a three G. Like I, I just throttle the network in DevTools um, down to three G. So I'll show you here. If you go into DevTools and the network conditions, you can turn it down. So I usually go with three G, and then I'll go in and um, refresh the page. And just see like what. Um, actually, this is the wrong. This is the wrong dev tools. I got my other one over here on this screen. Um, maybe show you how this. How I do this. Okay, so I've set this to three G. I refresh the page, and it will tell me like. Um, how many requests so you can basically see like these are all the images that are requested um, on your home page and you can easily see like you know how, how big they were how much time it's taking this like never finishes loading uh, because it, it's still doing things in the background uh, so this oh yeah it finally did but you see there's still there's like this t this thing that keeps on loading over and over again. So that's insane. I can't believe it took that long. Now I do disable the cache when I do this to simulate somebody coming to the site for the first time. Um, anyway, but usually when I test sites, I that's how I do. So I'll, I'll compare. I'll do a test like before I change something, and I'll do a test after to see if I actually had a positive impact on the site speed. Some says Hamza says you didn't change the name though after optimizing. You're right. I did not change the name after optimizing. That's a good catch. I can't believe I did that. All right. <laughs> That's why it looked identical because it was pretty it was pretty much identical. Um all right. <laughs> Let's take this to uh here. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so before I hadn't actually been loading the the new image <laughs> still loading the old image uh, so let's compare now let's zoom that in all right so it's actually still really good 
I can't tell the difference. All right, so yeah, that is the new one. Just to we'll we'll just prove it here. Just uh, to double check. Yep, it is. It's the one that says OP in there. So yeah, so that officially, not the last time, but this officially is less than twenty five percent the size of this one on the right, and it looks identical, even zoomed in. So. Once again, that's awesome, and it's actually legit this time. So, good catch. You caught that again? That was Hamza. All right, so, uh, or Hamza. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Uh, so, maybe Hamza, thank you for that catch. Um, someone asked, Jesse, gulp or grunt? I used to use grunt a few years ago. But I switched to gulp. Um, gulps, gulp seemed to me easier to configure. Like the configuration for gulp is just like writing JavaScript. It's it's more familiar. Uh, also, it seems faster. So that's why I made the switch. Um, I think if you're like really used to grunt. I don't see any reason, like, if you're happy with it, I would say maybe, I mean, I'm, I'm not like an expert at this, but I would work on learning Webpack. Uh, they're not exactly like the same thing, uh, cause Webpack does other stuff, but, uh, check out Webpack if you want to do like React and things like that. If you're just doing regular websites, I would try to learn how to do everything you're doing in Grunt, but using just regular um, scripts, so like NPM scripts to do it. You can do it all. It simplifies things, and um, I've been trying to learn how to do it as well. That's my my advice. Uh, if you don't know Gulp yet, uh, don't worry about using it. Just go um, try to use NPM scripts and Webpack. Melissa says, I still have a question about which command line tool to use in Windows. Okay, and Naveen said, yeah, that CMDER uh, works good. So yeah, that's that's the one that um, that I use. Valendier just joined in from Brazil, working as a software developer in the UK, um, in London. So awesome. Thanks for watching. Uh, you kind of joined in here at the at the end. We did some image resizing and compression uh, conversion straight from the command line today. Um, we got some good results. This video will be available. The recording will be available like right after I I end the stream. Um, Bill asks, "What do you use for hosting the WordPress that you utilize and calling the API?" Uh, I'm hosting it on a droplet on DigitalOcean right now. Uh, you don't have to do it like that. If you have like a shared hosting provider, you can still use the API straight from there. It's built into WordPress now. So, um, yeah, any any place that lets you host WordPress, as long as they don't lock down your plugins, like um, like there there are some uh, WordPress specific hosts. I can't remember that. There's one in particular I worked with that you, there are only certain plugins you could add. So I wouldn't go with something like that because you want the freedom to customize. Um, but most of your shared hosting will allow you to, you know, you'll, you can do WordPress or you can set it up on DigitalOcean. I'm actually running it on a $5 droplet uh, because since I'm only using the API, I don't really need anything more powerful. and I'm going to do a lot of caching. And I actually haven't even turned on the caching yet on the WordPress side of things. And the site's still like pretty decently fast. I'm going to turn it on after we get most of the content in. Uh, World Boss asks, are you full stack? I would not call myself a full stack developer. I do some things that, that would be considered full stack when I have to, but I would say at least 80% of what I do is, is clearly front end stuff. Occasionally I do stuff that would be considered DevOps, um, like setting up, you know, servers and stuff and build processes and things like that. And that's just because I don't have anybody. I'm the only front end developer 
at the whole university right now. Uh, so there's not really, uh, there's another guy in my department that's, he's, he's really good with stuff. Um, so he can help out, uh, but it's not like technically his job to do things like that. Uh, so basically I got to do whatever I have to do, um, to, uh, to make the sites work. But I would, I wouldn't put it on my resume. Uh, as a front end, I, I, that wouldn't be honest of me uh, to do to say I was full stack. I would, but I'm confident saying front end. Which preprocessor do I use? So, Carol says uh, is asking this. What preprocessor? Um, for my uh, CSS, I use SAS. Uh, so I write it in SAS and then uh, trans convert it over. Um, I was editing just some straight CSS towards the end of this pro project. Um, I just didn't, I was really close to launching and um, I didn't have the automatic conversion set up on the React site. I had it on like the previous version of this site, which was static. And um, so I didn't have time to go through and set that up. Uh, but I do like SAS. I'll probably switch up. It's, there's some new stuff coming out with CSS though. So when that starts to get supported, I'm, I may or may not continue to use SAS. We'll see. Uh, hum, Humza. Okay. So earlier I mispronounced, um, Hamza's name. Uh, it's, I, I said Hamza. That's not correct. It's Hamza. So thanks. Thanks for telling me how it's, uh, how it's actually pronounced. I, I really do want to know and, uh, pronounce, uh, your names correctly. Uh, Hunter says, uh, they agree the config for Gulp is better and it's also faster because it uses node streams. Okay, so that seems like a, a more knowledgeable answer than the one I gave even. Um, he says, in particular, it's using node streams, so it's faster. Actually, yeah, you're definitely right. I, I had forgotten that part of it. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, but this was my understanding whenever I switched, is that... Um, Grunt would step through all your processes like one at a time, but Gulp has the ability to um, do like multiple things at once. So that's how it can do it so much faster. So I, I, it's been a couple years since I've actually even read anything about that, but I think that was, that was the reason. Uh, Hamza asked, planning to do a stream on the caching part. Yeah, maybe I'll. Um, I didn't show any of the WordPress side of things, so if there's interest in that, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll show like how I set up. Um, I did a plugin, uh, like a custom plugin in PHP to set up custom post types. Um, maybe I'll show that and then show um, the plugin. I, I actually am using a plugin for caching, so maybe I'll, I'll do a little bit uh, of that as well. Um, if if you all want to see that. Uh, all right, Melissa said thanks for taking time out of the day. Uh, you're welcome, Melissa. Um, this is awesome, and it's not just. I don't see this as like me helping you out so much as us like collaborating because uh, you all, you know, catch my mistakes and uh, give me a lot of good uh, good feedback and and good ideas. So I think it's a mutually beneficial relationship here. We have going on YouTube. Um, all right, I think we're at the bottom. We only have two more two more um, comments here to go through. Um, man, Ad Aditya. All right, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. It's looking like Aditya. <laughs> um, it asks, are React components responsive by default? If not, then you use Materialize or just Media Queries. Yeah, so. A React component is is not anything by default, really. It's whatever you want to make it. So these are responsive because I use Materialize, and Materialize is a framework that's responsive. And then also I added my own media queries where I needed them. So um, there were there were some spots where I just needed some more like fine grained control over the positioning of things. So I added in some extra media queries on top of what comes in materialize uh, but that's that's how it was so um, 
So I guess React by itself doesn't really, um, it doesn't come with any markup by itself. So whatever markup you give it, it'll just do that. So if you give it responsive markup, it'll be responsive. If not, it won't. All right, last one of the day, unless somebody puts something in here in the next couple of seconds from Val. Um, he asks, join the show late and asks, um, how long have I been coding in JS and JavaScript? Um, okay, so I'll give two answers. I first started when I was in high school with like super basic stuff. Um, and I didn't do anything with it for a long time. So we're talking like early 2000s, right? So maybe 15 or 16 years ago. I didn't do anything with it for a long time until I was already um, probably maybe like five years ago. Four or five years ago, I got back into doing websites and things. And uh, as I as I kind of got deeper into it and had to do more complicated things for my clients, I was freelancing, doing like some subcontracting work. I started, clients started asking for things I did not know how to do. And so I had to learn more JavaScript. So probably I would say like four or five years ago, I can't remember off the top of my head, somewhere around there is when I really like made an effort to learn JavaScript. So I'm not like super ad advanced at it. I don't, I don't think I'm super advanced. Um, and, uh, I will, I'll, you know, have this disclaimer. I don't, I don't mind giving the disclaimer. Like this is my work and this is how I do it. I'm not claiming that this is the best way to do it. This is just a way I do it like this. I have a full-time job, but I have clients on the side and I produce sites that work and I get paid for it and I can support my family with it. So, um, is it the best way? Probably not. I don't really know, but it gets the job done, and I'm I'm generally proud of my work, uh, and you know I'm I'm happy with the results. So uh, that was a super long answer to that question. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, I still feel a little out of it from from the uh, from the cold that I have. So sorry for rambling. Um, oh, we get. <laughs> We got three more comments while I was talking. All right, I'll go through. Um, like I said, today's a relaxed day. I worked 13 hours yesterday, so I'll, I'll take some time to go through these. Um, have you used Polymer? Giovanni asked, how you use uh, Polymer? Have you used Polymer? Uh, I, I've i never used Polymer on a site. Um, I've looked at it and messed around with it a little bit, and I'd like to learn more about it. I'm really intrigued by it but I've just never had the opportunity to use it on a project yet. I don't know. Has anybody else watching use Polymer? What do you think about it? Uh, you don't have to answer now. You can put it in the comments if you want. Um, but I would like to know. You can message me um, on Twitter. And in general, all my social media stuff is up on my YouTube channel. So whatever you guys, uh, you are comfortable communicating with, I'm fine with that. I'm not going to get like mad if you, you know, try to find me on some other social media channel. Um, all my information is out there, so I, there's no sense in trying to hide anything at this point. It's already out there. Um, but if you try to call my phone, if you get my number, I, I never answer if it's a number I don't know, so leave a message or else I won't answer because <laughs> my cell phone is actually on the Internet, so it's the same number I used when I was freelancing at my own business. Um, I hate the data cap. Couldn't watch any live Vid. Oh man, was there um, uh, Mohammed Ansari is talking about a there's a data cap in fellow Indian. So in India, there's a wow, I did not know that. So evidently in India, um, or at least that part of India, um, there's a data cap. So it was hard to watch live video. So wow, that stinks. Um, sorry about that. I have it. We I'm in the United States and um, I do have a data cap. But um, I don't at work. So I'm at work right now. That's how I can stream this for so long in like 1080p and it's, it's decent quality. Um, at home, I don't really know if I could stream this, this long uh, at this quality. I might hit my data cap as well. 
All right, Val says, thanks for answering and sharing live. You're welcome. Thanks for watching. And uh, Humberto says, you should be proud of your work. It looks really great. Wow, that that means a lot. That really means a lot, y'all. Uh, it's really great to um, be able to interact with you. Like I said, I'm really kind of, aside from one other person that's that does some web stuff with me here, and, uh, and he's great. He's one of my favorite people. But aside from him, there's really nobody else here that I can talk to about web stuff, so... I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to get some feedback from some other developers and uh, and to help each other out and share share the knowledge. So my voice is kind of going, my throat's hurting a little bit, and um, I've been streaming for longer than I wanted to, so I think I'm going to cut this short. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, any questions you have, put them in the comments or on Twitter, and I will see you. Monday, no, not Monday, it's a holiday. I'll see you Tuesday. I'll be back Tuesday, probably 2 p.m. again on Tuesday. I'll, uh, I'll put it out on Twitter sometime on Tuesday when I'm going to stream next. Uh, so have a great weekend.